How come the boys' members had superpowers in the comics? What are the crazy differences between Stormfront in the series and in the books, besides her gender? And what major changes were made to Becca's storyline that affects the whole concept of the boys' series? Hi, I'm Dylan. Let's go and be aware of huge spoilers. The Conspirative Weirdo Huey Did you know that in the comic books, Huey was designed to look exactly like Simon Pegg? Yes, the comic creators were huge fans of the Scottish actor. But by the time Amazon started filming the series, Pegg was a bit too old to play the part. So it was passed on to the American actor Jack Quaid. And as a tribute to the source material, Simon Pegg was cast as his father. Despite Huey's appearance and nationality, he's pretty much the same in the comics and series, with some minor differences. First of all, he isn't a comic book geek type in the show. Huey is much more into conspiracy theories. Antisocial weirdo, you know. And second of all, he didn't manipulate Starlight as much as he did in the show. In every other way, he remained truthful to the comics. Oh, except for the fact that Huey had superpowers to some degree or another. Compound V played a much bigger role in the comics. Yep, all of the boys got superpowers if they injected the famous compound, just as Popeye the Sailor got his strength after eating spinach. That's why the boys weren't so pathetic when they met the members of the Seven. In the comic book, they could fight the soups back using the compound, and they used it a lot, which makes a huge difference, right? For example, Huey was able to break the chest of a soup after the injection. If the boys could use Compound V in the series, there's no way they would hide from Black Noir and Butcher's Aunt's house in Season 2, right? They would just smash the hell out of the goddamn ninja. Though there were two members of the boys who had super strength without the compound. Yes, the first one was Kamiko, just like in the series. Any guesses who the second one was? Mother's Milk! According to the comics, his mother worked at a factory contaminated with Compound V. And because she fed him with her milk, the boy grew up with some super strength powers. As a side effect, in the comics, Mother's Milk can't live without drinking. Yes, his mother's milk. Do you want to see what his mother looked like in the books? Here you go. She looks like a goddamn Jabba the Hutt. The source material is way crazier than the show. Here's another difference that'll shock you. Stormfront is a male in the comic books. Wait, what? Yep, that's right, folks. Same as Mallory and Madeline's characters, who were males in the comics, too. But for some reason, the creator of the Amazon series, Eric Kripke, decided to change the genders of these three to create the relationship lines for Homelander, which, of course, surprised the comic fans a lot. Because in the comics, Stormfront was in a relationship with Queen Maeve. Yes, don't want to disappoint you, but in the comics, Queen Maeve was an alcoholic bitch and was quite a nice fit for Stormfront. Well, before she cheated on him with another hero. Uh, besides all of that, the showrunners also decided to not kill Stormfront in the season two finale. Yes, in the series in that epic fight scene, Stormfront was brutally manhandled by the female characters. While in the comics, Stormfront was bitten to death by Butcher, Mother's Milk, and by Love Sausage. Who's Love Sausage? Oh, that's the soup who choked Mother's Milk with his giant c in season two, episode six. That's his don't be so close-minded. This character had a much bigger storyline in the comics. He even joined the boys in their struggle against the Seven. If you enjoyed Love Sausage, there's good news for you. According to the show creator Kripke, the character will return in Season 3. But let's get back to Stormfront, especially to how this character lost an eye. It differs too. In the series, Becca, Butcher's wife, stuck a knife in Stormfront's eye, while in the comic book it was Kamiko. Yes, Kamiko somehow got even with Stormfront for killing her brother. And in the comic, Becca simply couldn't do that. Any ideas why? We'll get to that soon. It's worth it, I'm telling you. But for now, let's talk about the characters that never existed in the comic books. Like, for example, there was no Translucent. There was another member of the Seven, Jack from Jupiter. And he was almost nothing like Translucent. Jack from Jupiter was an alien who came from Jupiter, obviously, and he had only one similarity with Translucent, a skin that can turn indestructible. Nope, Jack from Jupiter couldn't turn invisible, but he could fly. So the scene where Huey exploded Jack from Jupiter using an ass bomb was absent in the comic books. It was a figment of the sick imagination of the Amazon showrunners. Another character that never appeared in the comics was Mesmer. And Ezekiel, who appeared for a couple of episodes in season one, was loosely based on a Christian-themed soup called Oh Father. But these two have almost nothing in common. And perhaps the most important character that we never saw in the comics was Stan Edgar. 
Yes, he was only referred to in the comics a couple of times, but we have no clue what he looked like and he was never a major villain like he appeared to be in Season 2. The Deep was written in a completely different way. First of all, just look how he was designed in the comics. He has this crazy Jules Verne style helmet that he never takes off because he believes in the ancient Atlantic curse that the helmet was charmed with. The Deep is also black in the comics, and by the way, A-Train is white. Second of all, the Deep isn't that important of a figure in the comics. Yes, well in the series he gets some really cool story arcs and dramatic development. Third of all, the Deep's powers differ too. In the comics, he can't talk to the Sea Dwellers, but he can fly instead. Obviously, we can tell that Amazon's The Deep was designed as a parody of Aquaman, cause why not, right? And fourth, and the most important point, The Deep never abused Starlight. It was another member of the Seven, or should we say members. Yes, it was Homelander who tried to abuse Starlight and then he was joined by A-Train and Black Noir. But luckily, just like in the Amazon series, Starlight was able to defend herself. Now, let's talk about one of the biggest differences between the show and the comics. Butcher's wife Becca died much earlier. As sad as it sounds, Butcher's wife died after giving birth to Homelander's son. In some way, we can say that her superhero kid indeed killed her. Not exactly like in the series, but still. And this difference changes everything. The motives behind Butcher's actions are completely different, because in the series, he wants to find and save Becca, while in the comic, he only wants revenge. Becca never had the storyline of growing up with her son, being isolated from Homelander and her husband. It was all made up by the Amazon showrunners. But why? Why change the source material that much? Some people may think that the showrunners wanted to make the series surprising even for die-hard comic fans. Admit it, it must have been a powerful cliffhanger for comic fans at the end of season 1 when they found out that Becca was actually alive. And more than that, the finale of season 2 was shocking and sad for everyone whether they read the comics or not. Though the truth of this major change is different. The writer of the comics, Garth Ennis, said that one of his biggest regrets about the plot twists he did was killing Becca and Robin. According to him, it's one of the worst cliches of the superhero genre. We all know that move, right? When the protagonist loses someone he loves and it puts him on the path of revenge and blah, blah, blah. We've seen it a billion times. But come on, this is the boys. They were created to laugh at all those superhero cliches, right? That's why the Amazon showrunners fixed Becca's storyline so brilliantly, manipulating it with the audience's feelings. And talking about Becca's son, there are two more shocking differences for you. The first one, Butcher didn't accept responsibility to protect the kid. He actually killed him. Yep, he crushed his head with a lamp. And second of all, and even more shocking, the baby wasn't Homelander's. It was actually Black Noir's. Boom! How'd you like that twist? Now, here comes the comic book plotline that could appear in the series, or not, but I am warning you, it's massive. So if you don't want to spoil it for yourself, don't watch the next part of this video. Black Noir is Homelander's clone in the comics. Yes, we saw a bit of his face in the seventh episode and it didn't look like Homelander's, right? Or did it? As crazy as it is, in the comic, Black Noir was Homelander's clone. He was brought into the Seven in order to be a failsafe if Homelander gets out of control. And he's very close to that. I can do whatever the f I want! That's why creating Homelander's clone, who's just as powerful as he is, was a good idea. Because nobody can stop Homelander except for Homelander himself, right? But the showrunners have already changed a hell of a lot of things. So it's completely possible that this twist may not make it into the series, because the comic books are just different. And that's awesome. Have you ever dreamt of becoming a superhero? What superpower would you like to have? Share your thoughts in the comments. Thank you guys for watching this video. Subscribe to our channel. And just as you always do, thanks for staying awesome.